I don't know why haters be telling me to mind my business when they're out here not minding theirs. Shut your mouth and enjoy the tea. We all know you're here for it, sis. You have logo, vision over. You have been one of less than a mugosi. Oh, wami, oh, wami. Zoro here and I have some great news if you have a YouTube channel or a business and you would like to get some affordable advertisement I offer those services follow the instructions on your screen right now and say hello to some new traffic now let's get back to the video hi ninjas how are you guys doing it's a go I'm in HWA Zoro aka Miss Fear for coming back for entertainment if it's the first time joining me you're most definitely welcome please do make sure that I subscribe and obviously hit the bell I absolutely love you and do not forget follow me on Instagram it's at boldly or oh, I me mean. now my ninjas today I've got a special <laughs> guest who some of you guys were in my comment section like oh I mean you need to check this whole story <laughs> you need to check this whole story so I'm here with her guys you can go ahead and introduce Hi, yourself. guys Liseho, Liseho is here <laughs> Thanks, thanks, my ninja, for inviting me. Hey, You're what can they telling you about me, girl? <laughs> Tell so, me. Okay, so basically, um, I'd say of, a little over a week now, mm -hmm. I came up and I was basically just telling everyone that guys, um, I almost got scammed three hundred and fifty thousand rands by a Congolese guy. Oh yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah. 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 And so under that, of course, ladies were coming in with their stories. Mm. People were basically saying their experiences and you know, it, mm. it, what I loved about the comment section was that, yes, there were a lot of women that were coming in yeah. saying, oh, a Congolese guy also did this. A yeah. Congolese guy. Congolese, well, a lot Congolese. of those stories, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then there were also others that were mm. like a Nigerian guy, a South African guy, yeah. a Zimbabwean guy, yeah. so a Malawian guy. Yeah. And I started getting a lot of DMs and there were mm. people and some people were DMing me and mm. some people were actually commenting like oh I mean you need to check this whole story she also got scammed oh, by a Congolese they know my story. I'm <laughs> telling you they do yeah I also got scammed by a Congolese man wow yes true story wow hashtag scammed by a Congolese man hashtag scammed <laughs> by a Congolese man you can also say hashtag scammed by a if it's a South African man that scammed you say yeah. South African man Congolese man Nigerian yeah. man Zimbabwean yeah. like whichever hey. Oh, let's not even forget an American man yes. or whatever. It's not only in Africa. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And I think that maybe before mm. we get into this, like, let's go ahead and just give the, this disclaimer. Number one, no, we're not xenophobic. Yes, um, we are we're not. just telling our stories. Um, and obviously, we're saying the nationality of yeah. the person that scammed us. It just so happens that it was Congolese yeah, for hey. both of us. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> so sad, yeah. 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 No, we are not xenophobic because my daughter, she's Congolese. So really, I cannot afford to be xenophobic, really. Yeah. So yes, um, my ninja is, is true. Um, yeah, I got skimmed by a Congolese man. I was, I'm actually still married to this man, actually. So you got scammed by a Congolese husband? Yes. Wow. Yes. So I met him um, in 2012. Mm -hmm. So when I met him, um, he said he was a medical doctor. He was from France. No, he grew up in France, but he's from Congo. Like, his mm -hmm. parents were in Congo. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, we dated uh, for about two years. Everything was fine, you know. He mm -hmm. said he's a medical doctor. And then he worked at some hospital. Mm -hmm. And then later on, he went to some other clinic. He was a doctor. Like, in my eyes, he was a doctor. Mm -hmm. But later on, I realized that, no, I found out that, no, he was not a doctor. He was just a fake doctor. <laughs> yes, he was a fake doctor. That was you know? working in government in South Africa. Before government, he actually worked at a private um hospital because there was a time when um one of my aunts was admitted at some hospital mm -hmm. and then he was he was there working actually th that's the hospital that i knew that he was working at so that was like his place of work okay so yeah i used to see him working in the hospital checking patients you know doing everything that doctors do and then after that after that um, hospital, he went to some other clinic in Pretoria, in Pretoria North, mm -hmm. in uh, Sochanguve. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was um, he was working there again. He's a senior surgeon. Everything was okay. Everything was fine. I was convinced that he was a doctor, but a trust me, <laughs> he was not a doctor. Eh? Wow. Yeah. And um, to put the spice on the story, so while he was um, there in Sochanguve, I think he got. Somebody like um, did some whistleblowing and they they caught him. He got mm -hmm. arrested, 
And then when I asked him what's the story, because he called me to come help him mm-hmm. at the um, police station. At the police station, yeah, mm-hmm. at Albertson. Mm-hmm. So I went there and then I asked him like, why are you here? What's happening? And he said, no, um, people are being jealous of him. You know, they reported him saying that uh, he's not registered with uh, the HPCSA. And that means there's something wrong with with um, his medical papers or qualifications. So I also checked. I was like, yeah, but where's your name? Why your name is not there? Mm-hmm. And he said, no, I owe a lot of money, but um, I'll make a plan. But it's a lot of money. I haven't paid for like, I don't know, two, three years back. And uh, that's why my name is not there. And then, okay, fine. He was suspended at work for that um, incident. And then... He had to go to court, clear his name, and I don't know what happened to that court process. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, he was okay. He didn't look like he's scared of being sent to jail. He was just okay, like, living his life, like, everything was fine. Mm -hmm. But then now that he was suspended, um, I think at his workplace, they asked him not to come back, (laughs) you know, because suddenly he started... um, looking for jobs outside South Africa because he started complaining about the regulations here in South Africa saying no it's just too hectic and he doesn't understand why they're being fussy about all of those stuff but wait I want to find out when yeah. you met him he was already a doctor how many years did he work in the mid as a doctor in South Africa I think as a worked. fake doctor by the way let me go ahead and say fake doctor I think two years I think two, two. years because I met him in 2012 Okay. And then he started traveling out of South Africa maybe um, 2014, 2015. Okay. He, he got himself like another job mm-hmm. outside South Africa. I think he was now with um, this... Doctors with borders. Yeah, whatever. that. Yeah, yeah that. Yeah. And then he went to, he went to Mali. Mm-hmm. So he was traveling in and out of the country to Mali. He would do like five weeks in Mali and then come home for like two weeks did you ever see proof of him working as a doctor in mali and that he was even in mali have you, have you ever checked his passport that he's actually flying yeah to yeah i saw i okay. saw his uh, traveling stuff okay i knew how much he was earning like okay. everything was just um okay. uh, uh, that i saw you okay. know okay okay and then unfortunately or fortunately <laughs> that that contract ended mm-hmm. maybe after like a year or so, and mm-hmm. then he had to come back home. Mm-hmm. So now, remember, now he's back in this country that has tight regulations. So now yeah. he was like, what am I going to do? Um, yeah, because now I think he stayed home for like three months because he was earning a lot of money from that Mali contract. So yeah. now he was earning in dollars, everything was fine. But then I think after three months or four months, that money was like running out. out yeah. And now he had to he had to find another job, and then um, then he started applying for for other jobs like outside medical sector. Mm-hmm. Then he applied for like finance manager jobs, and did he have qualifications for that finance manager? <laughs> so he told me that he also had like a MBA. What what you know? So I was like. Medicine and MBA, like, okay, oh, you must be very smart, you know. <laughs> Were you very you know? proud of your husband? Of course, girl. Oh. I'm thinking, <laughs> I've got like, you've got you know? like this, wow, you know, wow, <laughs> you I, I, know? like, okay, I was okay. like, wow, but the guy, you, the guy, the guy was so convincing, like, wow, very intelligent, very smart. He's got like friends of like high profiles, like, he could, uh, he could easily speak to the president. He was that kind of a guy. Like wow. he, he had like good friends. Yeah. He had like good um networks mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And uh okay, fine. So now he's like, I'm done with this medical thing. Mm-hmm. I let me try my MBA <laughs> my MBA stuff, you know? And then uh, I'm not laughing here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also not laughing. I'm not laughing. Wow. So now he he did find a job. He got a job and then he was like a senior sales finance manager in some tobacco, big, big tobacco company. Big. Wow. The people who smoke, I'm sure they all know that company is wow. their biggest company. Wow. Yeah. 
it's somewhere there in Rodipur today. Wow. On main reef. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This guy, like, he just yeah. he goes for those senior <laughs> yes. positions. He's yeah, not no, he play. doesn't play. No, no he doesn't <laughs> go for... Mm -mm. So he got that job. He had, like, people reporting to him, like, like the... What? Sales reps. Mm -hmm. The... The, the, the accounts people, the reconciliation people, he had like a team of like 15 to 20 people that were like reporting to him. Wow. So I thought, hey, this man, he, he's okay. You know, he... He's fine. But was he now earning more in finance than in medicine? It was more or less the same. Okay. Yeah, because okay. he's a senior position. position yeah. yeah. Then he got, even got himself like a new car, like those wow. Jack, um, this SUV, wow. <laughs> you know, those um, F-Pace. Yeah, so he was, we were good girl, <laughs> you know. You were boldly. <laughs> we were living. Wow. And uh, unfortunately, eh, you know what, eh? things happen. Eh? Unfortunately, he lost that job. He told me that he was retrenched, but when people tell me, like later... Yeah. On when I do my meds, people yeah. now they were telling me that no, he it doesn't look like he was retrenched because he left today and then tomorrow there was like a new finance manager, so that doesn't it was replaced, obviously. Sound like and again, retrenchment. retrenchment usually they start at the bottom, yeah. they don't just start by the like the manager that's up there that's supposed to know everything yes. and run everyone, yeah. Wow, so okay, fine. The, the job was normal now, mm -hmm. he was at home for. He was at home for like such a long time until last year, November. He was mm -hmm. just unemployed. I think he was unemployed for about 18 months before he... he 18? Yeah, like more than... One eight. One eight, yeah. Close wow. to two years. Yeah. How did that impact you guys' relationship? Oh, it was it, oh, it was tough. Because I'm sure yeah. that was the first time that he didn't have any income. Yeah. Would you say that time his ego was bruised? Oh my gosh. Did you feel like you oh, now had to my like... Goodness. Not just ego, like he was just like acting strange, like checking on me, like where are you? When are you coming back? Um, if I go to gym, like he would know that my, my class will take like forty five minutes. If if I'm not back within an hour, it's a problem. Like he was just like being insecure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um yeah, he was just being insecure and I didn't like that. And, um, but anyway, I, I was just like supporting him, like encouraging him, like, no, don't worry, you know what, something will, will come up. up. Yeah. And, you know, him being a, <laughs> a hustler. <laughs> hustler. I'm a hustler, baby. I'm a hustler, I'm a hustler. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So him being a scammer. Oh, actually. wow. <laughs> yeah, let's not even, because like, yeah. there's a difference. He was him a scammer. Him being a scammer. Yeah. yeah. So now, he, he was just like, and then he started doing... He wanted to start some business, mm -hmm. so he wanted to supply like uh, those masks, masks those and sanitizer. Stuff. Yeah, PPE. everybody was doing the PPE yeah. stuff, so he also yeah. jumped in the mm -hmm. trying. And I could hear him talk big numbers, <laughs> you know, like the money is coming. <laughs> yeah, you you'll be telling me that, you know, what we were actually house shopping for and like thinking that when that money comes, we are moving to. Like, Spain City. Wow. You know? We were Big thinking dreams, like, yeah. yeah, you know. So while he was at home, not working, busy up and down, I thought he was doing those PPEs. Yeah. He was not doing the PPEs. What was he doing? He was scamming some other woman. So he would take money from another woman's home and then bring that money home, like buy groceries. I remember actually... um. I think it was uh, for my birthday, even our daughter's birthday, he came home with with gifts. Mm -hmm. So he presented the gifts like they came from him. Mm -hmm. But later on, when we tracked the story back, those gifts, they came from that woman. So he was... Wait, when she was gifting him, who did she think she was gifting? Her man. <laughs> Wait know? a minute. So he passed a gift on to you guys that was from another woman. Yes. The nerve. So he lied to this woman. He said he's good two girls like me i'm his oh. daughter and then our daughter so now of course that woman he was buying things for her, her boyfriend's children stepchildren <laughs> you but know? if i'm if i should ask because you know there's this thing of there are people that are like oh you're just desperate whenever like you get scammed and stuff and 
what I, I'd say that about your story that yeah. actually teaches people is that it's not even a matter of like you are a divorcee because people will be like, oh, you're just desperate or mm. you're a single woman. This is a man that married you. Yes. This is a man you were with for how many years? Eight years in total. Eight years yeah. in total. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now he would come home with, not like a lot, but he would bring mm -hmm. like small groceries here and there. I remember with my daughter's birthday, he brought a cake. Everything was fine, you know, like, ah, you know, shame. Even though he's not working, but he's trying. And yeah. I mean, we appreciate that. Yeah. Even for my birthday, he bought me some some pair of earrings. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like, um, everything was fine. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, you know, he's trying, you know, and I didn't want to put him under pressure to find out where do you get the money from, where do you get the money from, because I felt like he was, like, at his lowest, you know, like, yeah. when a man loses his job, they, they like, <laughs> shame, you know, they really feel Their it, Their ego yeah. gets bruised. But even as a wife, like, really, it, it, it hits you. No, it is. Because it's I very had tough. to pay the house on my own. I had to buy groceries on my own. I had to make sure that um, the, our daughter goes to school. I have to make sure I have petrol money. He's got petrol money for his meetings whenever he, he needs yes, to, to go. do his PPE. And meetings. then now who was paying for the car? The one that he got, the expensive one that no, he I got? No, I couldn't pay. I, I couldn't pay. So the car was just piling up arrears. But um, at some point, the bank had to come and repossess the car. Wow. Because, uh, girl, <laughs> I, I cannot afford like a, yeah. a jack. I don't drive wow. a jack myself. So wow. they took it, yeah. And then um, sometime last year, and then now, you know, him being unemployed for such a long time, it was just like becoming like a drag. Mm -hmm. And now he was telling me that his family is also putting under pressure to go so that he can go to Congo. Remember mm -hmm. he's from Congo? Mm -hmm. He said, no, they're calling me back home so that they can advise me on how I can, I can just improve my life. So I said, okay, fine, go to Congo. And then he said, yeah, he'll be back in a week or two. He left November the 21st, and then on the 24th of November, same year. Last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that he was actually going there to get married to some other woman, some pastor. So I was so shocked. I was like, I was, I was so shocked for days. Did you, like, had you guys fought before he left? We didn't fight. Was everything okay? Everything was fine. I knew that he's going to speak to his dad. He's coming in a week or two. He didn't even pack a lot of stuff. He packed like like a small bag. He, he left his car. So his car was repossessed only this year. <laughs> so his car was still in you guys' yes, house? Yes. Wow. The when car he left. only repos got repossessed like in Feb or March this year. Because now... And by that time, he was owing 145,000 rent. Wow. Which I was not prepared to pay. Obviously. So now I was asking the bank, why, 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 why did it guys take so long? Mm -hmm. And they said, no, they've been calling him. He's been running and ducking and diving, you know, not answering their calls. And now they need their car. So I said, oh, by the way, he's not even in the country. Mm -hmm. And I told them that you can take the car. Wow. And then they took the car. And then that lady who was busy buying us presents, she also somehow um, got to know about me. Mm -hmm. And she said, actually, I was dating your husband because he told me that he doesn't have a wife and he's been borrowing money from me. And up to so far, I've borrowed him about 275,000 rent. How old was the lady? Is the lady, do you know how old she is? She's 50. 50. Yeah. And your husband is how old? Remember, he turned 40 last year. Yeah. Yeah, according to what I know. Okay. But seeing that he's got three passports. Yeah. And by the way, yeah. guys, um, Lesoko actually wrote a book, and her book is I Got Scammed by My Husband Who Married a Pastor. Yes. So those are the books that are right over there. If you need this book, you guys will leave a link in the description box. You can read everything. The impressive thing about this book and the fact that like, she spared <laughs> nothing. This is my copy, by the way. I can, I can give uh, two of you these 
two yeah. copies here. Yeah. So the two copies yeah. here, guys, um, we'll run a, a competition. Just yeah. make sure that you are following her. Yeah. And um, we'll run a competition and two of you guys will actually basically win the book. The book goes for 290. Yeah. But the, the nice thing about this book, you guys, I don't know if you guys will be able to see here. Um, she published everything. <laughs> Even screenshots of WhatsApp text messages. <laughs> pictures like even pick you see whatsapp of messages of her talking to the to the side wife because that's what i had is. to tell her that hey mom you married a married man you know how this is how like they now take it to another level yeah the side chick and side wife now huh, like imagine. wow and imagine. i'm stuck um, stuck in like because the today. pastor is really the side wife yeah because she also got married to the guy and but i'm, I'm stuck like he, he won't even uh, he won't give me the divorce decree. So I really don't know how they do things in Congo. I don't mm -hmm. know how can... I don't know. Mm -hmm. They just told me that, no, when people get married, they can't even check. Their system is not... It's updated. Yeah, so if somebody says, hey, I'm not married, mm -hmm. they take their word for it, and then they, they bless them. <laughs> and he married a pastor, hey? Wow. So, yeah. So, so well, wait, how did the lady that um, got scammed... Because she got scammed, two hundred and seventy thousand yeah, yeah. plus. Um, how did she now find you? So after I found out about my husband's wedding with his pastor, because mm -hmm. I found about it on on social media. How did you find out? Maybe I don't know. Okay. My friend of okay, I didn't tell you. So yeah. my neighbor came to my house and then she just asked, "Where is your husband?" I said, mm -hmm. "My husband is it? He's in Congo. He's mm -hmm. coming back in a week or two. Mm -hmm. She said, "No, he's not coming back." I'm like, "Why?" And then she just said, "Go to YouTube or go to." Instagram or Facebook and then she gave me a phone and you know like imagine seeing your your husband working somebody else down the aisle wow you know like seeing it on seeing it so when he was busy yeah. putting the new ring where was this old ring I don't know probably he threw it I don't know while he was in transit going to Congo I don't know but was his family there his family were there. They were also in my wedding. So I saw, I saw his mother there. I didn't see other people. But in my in my wedding, they were there. They came from Congo. They went to Mafikeng. I'm from Mafikeng. Yeah. They went there. They paid Lobola. We celebrated. I mean, we lived together as like a married couple for about six years. Wow. They used to come to our visit. Home. I used to go to their home. As you used well. to go to Congo. No, the most of the family they are here in oh, South okay. Africa. So in Congo, it's only his dad and his mom because apparently they think South Africans are xenophobic. Okay, <laughs> so they, don't so want they to are kind of yeah. afraid. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So now this lady who got scammed two seventy five thousand. Mm -hmm. So now after I found out about my husband's wedding on social media, I also went on social media mm -hmm. to say, hey, this man is married to me. Mm -hmm. This man is a scammer. This man, he's got three passports with wow. three different IDs. This man, he's actually not a, a doctor because now people started digging. Like yeah. People that were talking to me about the story. They actually called the university where he said he studied. He said and? he studied in, in France. And then the investor said, no, we've never had a student of that name registered in our campus. So even the MBA was fake? Fake. Wow. You know? And to think that he was making money in South Africa with fake certificates. And I wonder, how did he not get arrested? Was he <laughs> buying himself out? And I think that this is one of those things where South African law fails us. The yeah. lawyers, the police, mm. um, there, there's a certain place where they fail us because mm. imagine this person was a senior surgeon. Yes. This guy could have injured someone's son oh, for life, like imagine. circumcising them. He could have imagine. done something wrong. Yeah. I'm sure he has operated many people. Actually, after this whole thing, that I've, after I found out that he's not a real qualified medical doctor, mm -hmm. I went to HSPCA. I asked them, how did this guy get employed in South Africa? By the government? Yeah. And they said, what did they say? So I think he was employed by an, like an agency, so that agency didn't do their checks, and they just passed his um, documents to the hiring, I don't know, company that was hiring for the clinic, and then he was placed at the clinic, and then he worked. So, I, so they thought that I was uh, laying a complaint. It sounded like somebody before me complained about him. 
Okay. Maybe like a patient. Yeah. So I said, no, I'm his wife. I'm not a patient. You know? Wow. I told him that I'm not a patient. I'm, I'm his wife. And I can show you everything that I have about this man, his, I, his papers, his certificates. Can you verify for me? And yeah. they, they took some time, but they, at least they did a step. They contacted Home Affairs. Mm-hmm. Home Affairs came back and they said, these guys' papers are fraudulent and they don't even know about his whereabouts. I think it was a time when he was already um, traveled out of Congo. Wow. So he's flagged in uh, Home Affairs, he's flagged in HSPCA. And uh, yeah, so now after my social media stories, the site, mm-hmm. you know, who bought my gifts, gifts. and groceries at home. Do you still wear the <laughs> earrings that you got though from him? <laughs> Oh, they're so beautiful. Are you serious? <laughs> Do you still wear them, though? No, I don't okay. wear them. I mean, but actually, you can, though. No, but I feel bad. I, I, mean, I don't think that she would no, mind. But, no, but she, she's actually a good woman. Yeah. She's such a good woman. Like, it hurts. It, it hurts. Like, she's genuinely a good woman. And then she would tell me, I mean, she told me how he, he approached her. Like, they met at some Land Rover dealership in Four Ways. What was he even doing at Land Rover? I don't remember he was driving a check. Oh, okay. <laughs> he took his car for service. Oh, okay. And then she was meeting, I think, a client there. So they met and then... So she said when she met him, he had his wedding ring on. Mm-hmm. And then two, three months later, then he, she was not seeing the wedding ring. And then when she asked, like, where's the wedding ring? And then he started saying, no, um, I'm going through a divorce. I don't even have money. They've frozen my, my money in the bank. So... Can I, can you please help me borrow me? On the get go. That's how it started. I don't know after how long they've mm-hmm. met, but that's how she, he managed to get money from, from her. Mm-hmm. He lied to her saying that he's going through a divorce mm-hmm. and his accounts have been frozen at the bank. Like he doesn't have a penny, nothing at all. And he's got a car to pay. He's got two kids. Remember he faked me and our daughter. Yeah. So now that woman was buying stuff for, for his, his two, two daughters <laughs> wow Kandish is buying for his wife and child <laughs> you know wow yeah and in total she told me that the money that she gave him it was about 275k and from me i think i gave him about 140k wow because at first uh, it was about his car being getting repossessed and then i would pay for him like one or two installments plus the interest that was due mm-hmm. and then the other time he told me that he had to go to congo to to see his family they were like his dad was very sick so i think actually <laughs> the time when he went to congo not last year he went 2019 and last year so 2019 i'm sure he proposed with <laughs> with my money you know to that new wife <sighs> because when i put my when i really find out i think they met in 2019 when he was in congo with mm-hmm. my money that he said his father was wow needed i mean for for his medication and whatnot so he proposed and then he came back here and then he was stuck because it was lockdown mm-hmm. so during lockdown he was trying this ppe thing and it didn't work and then end of last year he decided that hey <laughs> let me go try this church new, new scam this yeah probably it's probably he's going to scam the pasta. Well, honestly, yeah. like a scammer will always be a scammer. I'm a scammer you. has yeah. a scam mindset. Like he scammed you and you're his wife. Yes, imagine that. Like he's. He, he, this he's, blows my mind. Like you're his wife. <sighs> and you're the mother of his kids. Not just that. Like you're his. Like. Okay, the other lady, I'm really sorry that she lost like 270,000, right? There are a lot more people that have lost a lot more than that. Um, And you would be like, okay, but okay, sharp. But this, this is his wife. Like, you and now have... he, he got in another wife. So he's going to scam this other wife as well. Obviously. The one that actually I tried to speak to this wife. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, you know what? This man, he's like this, this, this. And this man, he's still married. Are you away? She just checked my WhatsApp and then she blue ticked me and she blocked me. I'm like, I'm trying to help you. So I I think that this is the thing, ladies. Mm. We have got that syndrome of I'm special. Yep. And that thing is what kills most of us. 
I always say this, other than the fact that you are an individual, yeah. other than the fact that Owami has got this individuality, yeah. as a woman, I'm no special than the next woman. Yes. Even yeah. if yeah. I, I drive a very nice car, even if I'm gorgeous, yeah. even if I run successful businesses, yeah. when it comes to men, if one man can treat a woman this way, yeah. trust and believe he can treat you that way because Definitely. you are not special. Definitely. The only thing mm. is that you, the only thing that makes you different and special is your individuality yes, that's yeah. it yeah and i think that that is the problem because where she is she's probably like girl yeah she thinks I'm you crazy. could yeah you're <laughs> yeah, crazy like and i'm sure they've told her stuff about you that don't even exist i wonder what he told her about me yeah no obviously nothing maybe good. the same story he told the other lady she's from zimbabwe so yeah. probably uh he told that lady that hey i'm not married yeah, he did say, he said he was going through a divorce and his, his money is, is been frozen in the bank. Now he, he doesn't have anything, like he, he can't even buy <laughs> wow. nothing, you know. So shame, poor lady, she was just trying to help her man, my man, <laughs> you know. But you know, you, you speak laughing and yeah, I know, you know, because I was yeah. married for, for nine years, mm. right? And I remember when I found out that my husband was cheating, I don't want to lie to you. That was the worst experience I've ever gone through in this whole it's world. Painful. I, like I legit felt like somebody blew, like took a blow, and it's air was so literally leaving my my like my pain. soul was li leaving it's my body. So and you finding out that your husband actually also cheated on you oh. with a fifty year old. And he would go out there and do all those stuff. Okay, never mind the fact that he scammed her money. Just the fact that, like, you find out that he was Regardless unfaithful. of her age. It's, Regardless yeah. of also her age. Yeah. But the fact that he was unfaithful and I'm sure you start playing back. This, that, like, how, how did you feel oh. as just his wife? I was so in pain. And I only, I only recall, like, I think one or only two incidents that my husband didn't sleep at home. Mm -hmm. in the in our marriage mm -hmm. and then he would tell me that he's going to like he's going to church he's mm -hmm. doing this prayer retreat like an overnight prayer mm -hmm. so he would go and um he would say no it's the fasting like i can't even come i can't even we can't even take our child there like it's like those hectic prayer sessions that he needs yeah. to go on his own he, like Imagine. a man has to go into battle spiritual warfare Kante, he's not going to church. He's not going to pray. He's going to another woman's house. You know? So when I think about those things, you know, they hate me. Like, I was so in pain. I was like, so all along when I thought somebody was going to pray, he was not yeah. going to church. Um, just because, you know, you are sharing your, 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 your story. And, you know, yeah. sometimes I feel like I can understand completely with that because mm. I remember, and this is something that I, I never even shared on YouTube, yeah. is that the time that um, I found out that, because I don't even call him my husband anymore, he's my ex-husband, even yeah. though the divorce is not finalized yeah. yet. Um, he used to go to a spot to pray all the time. He used to go and pray all the mm. time. He used to be like someone that prayed a lot. Mm. And so there was this place that was kind of secluded, and so he would go there to pray. Mm. When he started cheating, he took that girl to that place because he knew that people would not be there. So they would drive and go to that place because he knew the area like very well. It's a sacred well. place. It's a sacred yeah. place. So at first he used to go to pray and then now he used to go to cheat. So it was like, yeah, I, 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 someone may not understand yeah. because when your husband goes to pray, you're like, he's not just praying for him, he's praying for me, yeah, he's praying for our family. You give him all this space. Yeah. And so it's such a, a betrayal of trust yeah, when someone actually uses yeah. God against you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So later on I found out that, no, he didn't go to church. He actually took somebody to a spa treatment because later on uh, i saw that you know there were pictures that were taken there so that lady now she also came out on social media saying hey actually i was with this man we were there we were there we were there so that really broke my heart you know to, to think that he left me alone with a child mm -hmm. to go and be with another woman mm -hmm. like really yeah he didn't even think about our safety yeah so he chose his happiness over his family's happiness his um his selfishness obviously you know yeah and that really broke my heart i felt so broken i felt like like somebody just like took something out of me you mm -hmm. know and uh, i was disappointed i mean because 
I didn't expect that from him, you know. And funny enough, he was the kind of a guy like he he behaved like like he, he was somebody that like he liked respect, you know, like mm-hmm. when people saw him, like they respected him so much. Mm-hmm. And um he was like that he was seen as a man of integrity. Yeah. Like, I mean, people would never think that he, he would, would cheat. Do that. Yeah. He would never think that he would scam and and do the things that he did. Yeah. Even I was shocked. I was like, because he, he was actually strict. Is he it? was very strict. But wait, I just want to find out if you're comfortable sharing this. Mm-hmm. Um, In the eight years that you were together with mm-hmm. him, did you ever find him cheating? No, never. And never. that's what I always but say. But there was just this one incident... Um. Mm-hmm. Of which she denied. Mm-hmm. So I remember there was a time I was at gym, mm-hmm. and then this other lady, um, she approached me actually in the changing rooms. Mm-hmm. So she she asked me like, "Do you know Kevin?" I was like, "Yeah, is he your husband?" I said, "Yes, he's my husband." And uh, like she looked like she was disappointed. I was like, "Who are you? Like, why are you asking me personal questions?" You know. Mm-hmm. And then um, she started. Uh, <laughs> You know, phone, say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she just also gave me a phone. And then she showed me a picture of my daughter in her phone. So I was like, so mad. I was like, how dare you have my daughter's picture on your phone? And she said, oh no. um, He sent it to me. Why would he send you our child's picture? And then she told me that um, they talk, they, they do chit chat there at gym. The guy has been asking her out and like she, I don't know, I think they were dating according to her, Mm -hmm. you know, and she was getting frustrated that every time when she wants to visit him, like he's ducking and diving. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm at my sister's house. Um, I'm at work. Um, Like he was just not available. So she was getting frustrated that how come I never get to go to your house? So somebody told her that the reason you can't go to his, his house, house is because, because he's married. married. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Married to her. And I told her, it's like, oh, wow. I'm married to, to him. So. And then I confronted him. I was like, who's this woman? You know? And he was like, funny enough, he also painted some different picture on, on him. He said he's this rich guy. Because I think the lady has just um, gotten divorced. Okay. So he said, no, don't worry. You know, I've got your back. Um, I'll help you pick the pieces. Because the, the lady, she was just like, you know, in in a bad space. Yeah. You know? And he said, no, I'm rich. I'm this medical doctor with MBA. You know, I'll get you a car. I'll sort you out, get you a new home. You know, like I'll, I'll restore you. You know, and you know how it feels when you're broken. Yeah. You just need that somebody Someone, who can... Yeah help you yeah and she thought that he was the person you know wow but she she was like no this guy why something's just not adding up can they like you were there i think she was actually smart to come and approach me yeah even though he denied it yeah but when i see the stuff like Mm -hmm. mm -mm. he denied he said no she's he's saying that that lady was approaching him asking money from him the lady was desperate the lady was asking money for rent from from him Him. and he was just trying to to help where he could i was like but why are you helping her yeah you can't be taking our money like yeah and and he said no i didn't even um give her that's why she kept on on nagging because she just wanted me to help because um at first i said i would help i said no don't do that you know but she Mm -hmm. said no he's the one who was Offering, obviously. Offering, saying yeah. he is a multi-millionaire. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, that's... Like, so, that's one incident that happened that in you our can marriage. Remember. And we, we thought about it. Mm-hmm. And he, he was like, no, 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 no. It, it didn't happen. And he disappeared. From, we used to gym together in the gym. Me, mm-hmm. him and her. Mm-hmm. And then he changed the, the gym clubs. And then it was just me and her. And she also disappeared. Apparently, she was also a foreigner. Wow. She went back to her country. Okay. So my husband was actually taking foreigners. Wow. It just happened that he was married to a South African. Yeah. But he was scared. Yeah, foreigners, because obviously like the other ladies, one, she's yeah. like a Zimbabwean woman. Yeah. Um, you know, 
so I, I just want to find out from you because mm. um with the experience that I had, I had a lot of people actually saying that these people are like a syndicate. They're like yeah. a group. They work together. And I would agree because there are many ladies mm. that actually even sent me pictures of guys mm. that duped them. None yeah. of the guys that were sent to me are the same guy that scammed me. Yeah. None of them. However, it's the same story that is being used. So obviously that is proof that these people do communicate and they do talk of how they can actually do a, a stuff like that. Mm. Throughout the years that you were with your husband, mm. did he have friends? Funny enough, talking about his friends, he didn't have a lot of friends. And one thing that I picked up uh, with him, he didn't like to be friends with people from his country. I'd be like, why not? You know, they're like, and he would say, No, um, Congolese people are jealous of him. Oh my gosh, that's exactly what yeah. my scammer told me. Yeah, he was like, Congolese guys are too, are too jealous. Yeah, I guess the scammer doesn't like befriending a scammer. Then, then which syndicate is this? I don't know that they syndicate with. Yeah. It makes no he, sense. He said, Um, so he, he was not very close with with people from his country mm -hmm. he was friends with like old white men he okay. liked older people I was okay. like why are you being friends with old Such people yeah you know and it was he was more into white people i was okay. like why why are you not friends with um your homeboys and he's mm -hmm. like no they're jealous of me you know congolese people when they see you progress they 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 talk you down they yeah. they want what you have yeah and they and that's what they say yeah but i honestly don't believe that's the full truth i think that maybe they do have some that they're friends and it's just in secret um because i think that maybe it's also that thing where if they agree to say that i'm also friends with other congolese when they need money from you then you have to say but why can't you ask your brother or your friends because if now mm. this person comes to you as if mm. i don't have friends i don't have anyone you yeah. are the only person that can help me exactly. so you kind of also i think it's also a mind game yeah. so you kind of also it's feel like well. i'm the only person in this yes, person's life so yeah. if there's like there's a jive have yeah. i have to dance yeah yeah because it's but just... another thing this is actually very important another thing i think maybe they scared that the, the people that know them from home mm -hmm. they will they will expose them yeah because I'm thinking that if I knew his friends from Congo, maybe they would have told me, like, no, this guy is not, not a doctor. Yes. This guy, uh, he, he never went to he France. Never, yeah. Maybe he has never even been to France. Yeah. Actually, after my story, people came out. They were like, no, this guy, he was in my class. He didn't even finish his, his uh, courses. And this he guy, was busy he never operating went to France. People. This guy, um, he didn't even do um, medical qualification. Like, he did some bio something biomedicine but he didn't even finish it so i think that they are scared that people will expose them so they just try to to like not even have any interactions with people who really know them because after i came out a lot of people came and they told me who this man is so would you say that it's it's actually like a bit beneficial for you as a wife to know some people that know your husband if he's not from South Africa, even if he's from yeah. South Africa. So if let's say this guy's from Venda. Yeah. Know some people that know this guy from Venda. If of this guy's know from KwaZulu yeah. Natal. Know yeah, some know people that friends, know yeah. him from yeah. KwaZulu Natal. If he's yeah. from Congo yeah. or, or Zimbabwe, Nigeria. Yeah. At least yeah. know some people yes. that know this yeah. guy. Not Did just family because look at me. Yeah. I knew his family. I was close with his family. Mm -hmm. And they just turned their backs on me like that did you ever say anything ask questions to his mom i did try to ask and i actually started with the sister i was like because the mom doesn't speak english very well so oh. i spoke to to the sisters yeah and i was like what the hell is going on what is happening and you know? yeah why is why is this happening my, why husband, is my husband marrying, getting married? some fake prophet I'm like, Don't you guys Congo? think you need to go speak to my family you owe my family an apology yes you can't just uh do what you did. I mean, you went to my family when you wanted to marry, marry me. me. The least you can do is to go back to them. If maybe there's something he's complaining about me, yeah. go to my parents and tell them that. Yeah. You know, and they also just blocked me. <laughs> you know, they also blocked me. What? Yeah. So now my, my I can't even take my, my daughter to, to see her cousins because I don't trust them anymore. 
But I then, don't. has your husband tried to reach out to talk to to your to you guys' daughter? He tried. He tried. After but he, was, he like, was married, it was via legal processes. You know, like now I'm trying to get him to to sign uh, the divorce, and now that he's out of the country, it's such a mission because now and he's in another country where they don't speak English, so it means the whole divorce thing is dragging. It's expensive. They need to get translators. And uh, our like it's just complicated, you know. So is he in Congo right now? I don't know. I don't know. I heard that he left Congo because people there in in Congo they were they were like bashing him and his new wife pastor. Did he live with his fake prophet? Of course, he, he left with her. Of course. Well, girl, that you of are course. going to get it so of good. Of course. You know, so she, she actually left her church and her calling for a man. Yes. And he doesn't have money, so it means he's living on her. Because right now, actually just after the time when we're doing our legal stuff, because mm -hmm. now we're discussing about child maintenance, mm -hmm. we're discussing about his debts that he left here in South Africa, because he also left me with debts. Yeah. Because we had a joint a property together. Guys, we have eight years, like six together. years of we have marriage. Yeah. Rates together, which... I couldn't pay. Yeah. So, like, I'm in debt as we speak because of that man, you know. Ever since he left, yeah. has he ever sent you a cent? Do you know what? He sent me money in those days when he was getting married. So, he wow. had like a four days wedding. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. a big, wow, massive wedding. Like, they say it was about more than two million. In yeah. their currency. Yeah. Wow. It was a big, fancy wedding with like, woo. They close the streets. Like, wow. Remember, she's a she's celebrity a gospel. Wow. Yeah. So she actually left her church and ran away with your husband. Yes. Because now her, people chase her. I don't know how true is it. I'm not in Congo. Mm -hmm. But I hear that she had, like, they, they left. What yeah. a man can do to one woman, yeah. don't be mistaken, he will do it to you. Or he can do it to yes, you. Yes, High chances are he will. Um, it's either a man has respect for women, for a, for women, or he doesn't. Yes. If he disrespects one, he, he can disrespect you Another. as well. Yeah. And that's exactly just how yeah. you ain't special, sweetie. Your turn is coming. <laughs> you trust are me. Mfundisi, your turn is coming. I'm in. telling you, like yeah. it is coming, and that's exactly and I how it to is. Own you, but it's like that. You block it's like me. that. <laughs> it's like that. But you know, she will yeah. unblock you one yeah. day. Yeah. She will unblock you. Yeah. When just, I. I'm done and show her the divorce decree. There's yeah, no, like, but oh, uh, what yeah. I'm saying is she will unblock you trying to say, I'm so sorry, my sister, I didn't listen to you. I'm telling you, because <laughs> that's exactly how it is, unfortunately. That's exactly how it is. There's no woman yeah. that is more special than the other. You know, a scammer is a scammer. Yeah. Yeah, and they don't care. They're like narcissists. Yeah, yeah, that's It's like, true. it's just about them. Mm -hmm. And they, they are con people. Mm -hmm. You know, they just, they just ask the con people and they don't care. What yeah. advice would you give someone out there that's watching? You know, I would say to ladies mostly, you know, like when we go out there, we meet people. Mm -hmm. Before you start dating a person, like just try to find out some, dig some more information about them. Like yeah. try to find out exactly about their backgrounds, about their values, about a whole lot of things like um, their families, the things that they believe in. Just do your investigations and... Mm -hmm. um, even in the relationship or in the marriage, I know it might sound like I'm saying they must be Snoopy, but you know what? You need Snoop. to you need to check. You do really. need to. You, you need are, to check. That's how you find things out. Yeah, you need to check. You need to check, and I don't know. I just wish men could be honest. You know, I'm not saying all men are bad. Yeah, but, but I'm most... just saying even women. I know we we can be terrible yeah. sometimes. You know. Yeah. So I just wish that you know. People, when they meet, they could be honest with the other. You know, if you know yourself that, hey, you are not telling the truth on that aspect of your life, be honest. If you know that you never went to any university, don't come and lie to us here and say, hey, I'm a doctor. Um, I'm from France. In the meantime, you are from Kinshasa. <laughs> don't, don't lie to us, <laughs> you know. And you yeah. come and you go and you make copies. You go to your view and you just lie and you say hey i went to vets to do my mba and then later on you tell people i went to liverpool university to do my mba so now we're like 
where exactly did you do your MBA? And I think that this is also another thing. There are people yeah. that will be like, oh, it's just because you're a desperate woman. This man has saying that it... I don't think that he met you at a place of desperation. Nope. And mind you guys, they dated for two years. That's a full relationship. Yes. This man went and paid Lobola. Yes. Why would a scammer go and give your parents money? You guys even have a daughter for crying out loud. And I think like your story also just shows um, women to say that, guys, yes. it's not even a matter of... And that's the unfortunate part. You can't mm. even be like, you can box. You can't. You, you know, can't box them because others are so... Are, um, good at their craft yeah. and they <laughs> now make you look like you're you a fool thank you because right now when i look back i'm like oh my gosh yeah this guy he lied about so many things yeah i'm at the point now i'm like even his family they are they are con people they are con artists they are even his family they are scammers yeah because like and funny enough, you know, like when we're at home, like maybe during Christmas, oh, we're just in a family setting. Mm -hmm. They'll be busy calling him doctor, doctor. You in lie. How? <laughs> like, what? I'll be like, no. Why they have to where, where did they think their son completed if somebody that knows him from moves? Oh my gosh. No, I was like, no, but they're in on it. I know this other fake prophet from. Um, um, so the family are also. They are yeah. in on it because let me tell you, like there's this, okay, maybe I, I guess that when it comes to profitizing and whatever it can be, people can lie about it and whatever. Yeah. But this man, his mother and his father would even come to his church and like they would parade them, like mm. these are my parents, you oh know, and you're just like, but they are old people. They know their son is a scammer and the wife also knows, like it's a family business. Oh my gosh. I think. I it is a family business. Case, yeah. It is a family yeah. business. And unfortunately, that's the problem. You can't really even be like, I'm going to um, trust the family. because I can't. Right now, I can't really. I don't feel safe taking my daughter to them. Yeah. Even though she's missing her cousins. Yeah. She's like asking me about them. I'm like, no. How? Not. Um, how has this impacted your daughter? Oh, my gosh. Oh. And I know bad. I think that, that that's the one that hurts the most. That's the I one know. that hurts the most. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, like, of course she was hurt. I told her the truth. I told her that, Nana, daddy's not coming back anytime soon. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't want her to have, like, false expectations. Yeah. You know, like, there were times, like, he would, she would be, like, every time when there's a car parking, you know, she would think, oh, daddy's here, daddy's here. Aww. And I said, no. How old is she? She's seven now. She's seven. And okay. I said, no. So she does understand what yeah. is going on. Yeah. Yeah. And, um after this whole mer like wedding thing like people used to come to our house you know mm -hmm. just to like comfort us and then she would pick up like what's happening yeah there was a time she even thought her dad died oh, wow. i said no he didn't die wow he just did something terrible yeah you know? and I, I i showed her one picture i said yeah your dad married to somebody else wow. i don't think he will come back home so that uh, later on she doesn't even ask me but um fortunately we went for therapy mm -hmm. Even the therapist said, it's okay, tell her the truth. It's better now she knows mm -hmm. than you keep it away from her. And then yeah. when she's 16, 17 now, she starts having problems. Oh, she finds it out. Yeah. And then she's like, mommy, you lied to me. You yeah. said daddy went to look for a job. Yeah. Of that's what he said to us. Yeah. Yeah. So now, uh, yeah, she was uh, impacted very badly, you know, because they were very close. Eh? With Funny enough, they were very close. Like, they were very close. So I, I don't know. I don't know. This story is still troubling me. I actually yeah. don't know what went wrong with that man. Or maybe yeah. he was wrong from the onset and I didn't yeah. pick it up. Or maybe he got wrong in the process. Yeah. And he just abandoned everything and he he went for his cheese. Because he's like chasing the cheese, chasing yeah. the money. Because he saw that he was not getting anything from me. Anymore. He finished the other he lady. Did. He, got, he got money from you, basically. Yeah. He got, yeah. And he saw yeah. that, hey. I can't take more from her now. She's, she's her, she has a lot already on her on her shoulders. Yeah, and he decided to go find something somewhere, and he just left everything like that. So yeah, my daughter was um yeah she was hurt so badly, but um we both got counselling, mm -hmm. and uh, we're feeling much better now. It's almost yeah this is like september like yeah because he left last year november, november yeah. almost a year now yeah 
And yeah, it's like it's like grief, you know. If you told your story, people are gonna a lot of people are gonna be like, Oh my gosh, my sister but immediately you mentioned that oh and he was like not a South African, then it's like there's that aspect of judging. Of that course. Stuff. Like, like what uh, were you doing with a man that's exactly. not a South African? Like, you know, yeah. in this mm. and honestly, like love is love. You yeah. fall in love with yeah. whoever you yeah. understand what i'm saying and unfortunately with scammers they package themselves so well so well yeah. that it's so easy to fall head over heels so well yeah you just think that who like i couldn't fault him really i could not fault him with anything like he he, he was like yeah to me he was just like a guy that that i i thought hey this man would be would be good yeah yeah and um yeah that's it if if let's say maybe he he was to watch this video mm -hmm. just looking at that camera what would you say to him you know i would say to him that i would say to kevin because mm -hmm. he knows himself mm -hmm. i'm even saying to people here in south africa because the story it went viral in congo mm -hmm. but here in south africa it didn't go that far mm -hmm. so his name is kevin Kaseya, mm -hmm. K-A-S-E-Y-A. Mm -hmm. Just be careful, ladies out there. But anyway, back to him. I would just say that you, scammer, you Satan on legs, you need a prayer. You need a prayer and you need to have, you need to have compassion, you need to have empathy, you need to understand what you have done to me mm -hmm. as your wife, to me as somebody that loved you because I really, really, really gave all to the relationship that we had and you just you just didn't care so honestly you need a prayer and you need to look at yourself and see how disgusting you are and don't just look at how disgusting you are seek help because you are a danger to society you left your country you left Congo, you came to South Africa, you decided that, hey, this is a country where you're gonna, you're gonna make quick money. You're gonna come here and you're gonna lie to, to people here in South Africa. You're gonna lie to, to the officials here in South Africa. You're gonna tell them that, hey, I'm a doctor. Hey, I'm, I can do this, I can do that. And people gave you an opportunity. But that was wrong because you were just like, you're actually taking a risk. You put people's lives at risk. I feel sorry for the people that you operated out there circumcising and doing whatever that you had to do on them. You are disgusting wherever you are, Kevin. And you need to sort yourself out. And you need to go out there and apologize to all the women that you have scammed. Because I'm not the only one that you scammed. You scammed a whole lot of people out there. And I'm sure even wherever you are, you are scamming people. So I'm saying to you, you will be caught. You will be caught. And to all the foreigners out there that come to South Africa with a mission of um, scamming people, especially women. South Africa is not a place of, of scammers. No, it's not. South Africa is very, very governed. People, they will catch you when you are doing shady stuff. So if you come to people's homes and houses, please try to, to obey and be decent and don't come with your, with your, with your shadiness. Make an honest living. Make an honest living. We, we do try. Yeah. Is it fair that we try our jobs and people think that, hey, they can leave their countries and go to another people's country and then they do that? And when we talk, they say it was yeah. xenophobic. And it, it doesn't just happen in South Africa. Yeah. They, they also go to other countries. They go to, to Dubai, America. America <laughs> you know? Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But make sure that when you go, we're not saying it's wrong for you to, to seek um, greener pastures. Yeah. But make sure that you, you do it in the right way. Yeah. Don't scam people and you, you try you ruin people's lives. That's all that we're saying. But anyway, um, thanks guys. Thanks for, for watching and thanks for your support. And thanks to my ninja here for inviting me oh, to have a beautiful thank you home. For coming. Thank ah, you so much. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I think that, you know, maybe just as we're about to close up, 
honestly there's this thing where you know i want to start a petition mm -hmm. and i know maybe some people will think that i'm stupid but i want to find out can we start a petition that if someone scams you mm -hmm. they get money from you off of false information yeah it can actually be a criminal offense where someone can get arrested and jailed for that. And not just that you have to go to small claims because unfortunately I feel like that is the hmm. biggest, um, that is the, the, the biggest loop. If you go online and right now I take your picture I and I say your the name, police station here. Uh, uh, you the understand? Court, and they it, were like, no, he's out of the country. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about it. What he's not even on the wanted list. Yeah, he's like, no, he's out of the country for us to deal with him. He needs to be in the country. But even if he was in the country, what were they going to do? I don't know. It's no. not a criminal and they said, offense. Oh, no, you were the wife, so he didn't steal money from you. You gave it to him. To the other lady, they also said you were in a relationship with him. That's what they do. He that's didn't what steal from you. That's you what they do. Him. Yeah. My scammer, when we went to the police station, he basically told the police officer that this is my, she was my girlfriend. And the money that she gave me, it was a gift. And he basically said that I've been begging him for sex. But because he didn't have the time, um, I now want the money back. And honestly, I was the just so... Sex. Yeah, he didn't have the time because he was busy. Um, and so because I've been like after him and stuff like that, um, you know. And unfortunately for him, um, you know, they know because, guys, there was a police officer that laughed at me. And when I say loved, it was not even like in a bad way. Mm. He was just like, Kandi, you don't know them. That's what he said. He was like, we deal with cases like this all the time. And unfortunately, the only thing that can happen is to say, go to small claims court. Yeah. And unfortunately, I just feel like it's not enough. Yeah. You can't come and lie to me mm. about your name. Mm. You can't lie to me and say you are in some sort of business that you are not in. Yeah. And then get money from me yeah. fraudulently, whether if I'm in a relationship with you or not. Mm. I feel like you need to be truthful. If you're just like, hey, I need money for rent and yeah. I need money to put in savings. Can I have 350000 rice? Sharp. Not, hey, hey, I've got minerals stuck in Messina border. <laughs> hey, hey, I've got this, I've got that. It's just really honestly yeah, said. Hey, like, and I think that people need to remove this mentality of South African women are just desperate. You have a very nice job. You are, you support us. At, at one point for like 18 months, she was supporting this man. Yep. So this is not a desperate woman. Yep. She's not a desperate woman. So that's what I'm trying to say to say, let's number one, remove the shame mm. that comes with being duped yep. by a man. Yeah. Because it seems like they're doing this a lot. Yeah. And they are and winning women, because keep quiet, we yeah. keep quiet and yeah. we keep it in. Yeah. And then they basically go out there and they continue doing yeah. this to yeah. different women. Yeah. So for me, I got um, 10,000 rent on the week of his wedding mm -hmm. there in Congo. Mm -hmm. And then another 6,000 rent. So I assume that Money came from the wedding gifts that people were giving them. Other than gifts, Mamut, <laughs> you know? your money was sent to yeah. his wife. But he took another one. He took the 6000 back as soon as he found out that I knew about his new marriage. Then he took it back. And we were talking even after his wedding. Do you think this man was, was actually telling himself that I'm going to come back? I think so. If you I didn't know. find out and maybe never even asked, do you think this man would have still come back home? I don't know. It's either he was planning to... He was hoping that I won't find out. Mm -hmm. And then he will come back. It will be... Okay. Okay. Or... Um, what? Maybe I'll find out and then we'll talk about it and life goes on. I don't know. Only he knows what he was thinking. I don't know. Wow. But the fact that we spoke before he got married even after he got married you know and he didn't tell me that he 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 got married he found out that hey i actually found out and now when i was trying to find out from him like what is going on he couldn't explain himself and i was scared that he's going to lie to me and i'm going to fall for his lies because you know how yeah you know yeah i know so i, I said yeah. you know what i don't want to listen to his stories Let's so just... he never gave you an explanation no. really he, he never. He never. How, how, how would you say, how far are you with your healing? I would say, you know what? I think right now I'm in a better place, mm -hmm. but I won't say I'm okay. Yeah. But I'm in a better place compared to last year, December, and January, yeah. and Feb. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right now I can laugh about it. I couldn't laugh about it. You yeah, know? no, I, I would I, just cry. Yeah. You know, now I can laugh about it and I think the book as well it helped me to heal. Because as I was writing it down, it's like I was telling somebody mm-hmm. you know with writing a book you need to go back, review, go back, review, go back, review. Yeah. So I think I, I had to read the book and review the book. Yeah. So many times. So there were times when it was it was just too much for me mm-hmm. to go through the book because yeah. I would feel it's like I would revisit those memories yeah. of when I found out about him marrying somebody else while he's still married to me and think about all the lies that he told me, you know, about all the manipulations that he he did on, on me, on, on my family, yeah. you know, everything that I've put you know, yeah. in our marriage, yeah. and for somebody to just walk away without saying a word, you know, um, to leave me dead, like, yeah. really? How long yeah. can you be as a man? Yeah. That's, like, pathetic, really. Do you think that it it hurt a little bit more when you, it, it, it was sort of like a realization of, oh, my God, this man, not only does he not love me, doesn't even care about me? Of course, of course. The fact that he just left... Um, he left me with a child. Now I have to run up and down, dropping the child all by myself. I know that there are single women that are killing it, yeah. you know. And, you know, and, strength um, to you guys. Strength to you guys. And um, I'm also learning. I don't have yeah. a choice. Yeah. But um, to think that you had somebody yeah. and now they are not there anymore. Yeah. And now you have to like, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have a choice. I need to take the child to school. Fetch the child from school. Mm-hmm. I need to. I need to do everything actually. Yeah. By myself. Yeah. You know, so that changes everything. Of course, it's like, it's. It feels like it's strenuous on me because, I wasn't used to that before. Yeah. But I'm not saying that it's. It cannot be done. Done. Yeah. You know, but it's not easy. I am doing it. Yeah. Have you packed his clothes out of your house? <sighs> I did. I sold his clothes. Oh! I'm telling you. <laughs> I sold his clothes. What? I was like, I need to, I need some money. I need of to pay course, the ladies. I need to pay the rates. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I was like, oh, you know how Congolese dress, eh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Those, For all uh, those fancy suits and, uh, you, you know, know Louis, whatever you're the just Louis like. Vuittons, you know, I was like. I'm putting up for sale. But how was the emotional, um, Emo- the, That's why I'm like, it's like grief. You know, it's like when somebody has passed away yeah. and you need to pack their clothes away. Yeah. That's painful. Yeah, I I also had to pack. Yeah. Um, yeah, because yeah, you, some even, stuff. Yeah, I and, cried, you know. No, I, I remember I cried. Some, and mind you, yeah. that time I was like, what? I was like one week post op with the fibroid operation, mm. so I couldn't even f- physically peg and lift because like my body couldn't. Mm. And so I remember I had to get my helper and my baby sisters were there and we had to yeah. peg his stuff and then I had to hire a driver mm. that I had to drop the stuff off. So it's not nice. I pick no, it's not. Clothes. No, it's not. It, 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 it's honestly legit like that. It, it's honestly not easy. Yeah. So it's it's like literally like like dead. You know, yeah. divorce is, is, is hectic. Yeah. For those people that think that divorce is just like... <laughs> it's divorce is not pop and flay. No, name. it's not. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's hectic. Like, yeah. it, it tears you apart. Yeah. Like, you really feel like you were with somebody, you were jointly with somebody, yeah. and now it's like, you know, yeah. taking yeah. away all of that yeah. bond, all of that, the dreams you guys had together. Yes. I think that's know? the most difficult one, having to, yeah. to, to mourn... The, the dreams and the plans yeah. and the possibilities of, of what course. could have been. As I was saying, okay. we, we are trying, like, I try to go back out there and I'm just like, what? My guy's driving a Q5. <laughs> Boo! He scammed you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm told ninjas that, guys, from now on, a guy is like, hey, can I please have 100? My name is, I don't have. Yeah. And then I'm out. And like, say, uh, sorry, not today. Not today, say yeah. 10. Not today's camera. Yeah. Yeah, but wow, it's really yeah. but I wanna find out, like when you mm. guys were still dating, mm. did he ever ask you for money? No. Uh he wasn't remember he was a doctor. Oh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. he was a doctor. Yeah. He had money when he met you. Yeah, he was working, he had a job. Yeah. So everything was fine. We used to go out. Everything he was used fine. to pay for stuff yeah. and everything. Wow. Everything was fine. Um yeah, like from the onset, really, like, 
like I didn't see I didn't see anything like really from the onset I didn't see anything yeah but when I think back when I think back you know there were some things that I was like come on now let's go I mean really you should have seen okay yes. please tell me what are some of those red flags so that I've ninjas out there can also look out for them I mean the things of somebody just from I mean leaving medical to finance yeah. I mean that's like I, I should maybe I should have done better I should have like tried to like investigate it like but if, if his own mother is also calling him doctor his sisters are calling him doctor and by the way if a guy is lying to you and saying that he's you a know? doctor you can actually check on the is what the H A S P H P C S A yeah, yeah. The website you yeah. can check a person's name and if they're a doctor it will pull up. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if they're all registered. I, I don't know if they all supposed to be registered on the database. No, here. you are supposed, supposed to, to be if okay. you're working here in South Africa. Okay. Whether if you are obtained your doctorate in another country yeah. or whatever, it, you're supposed to be registered over there. When you're practicing here. Yeah, when you're so, practicing. So yeah, I think I should have I checked. So yeah, you are. And I think uh, his family as well, man. I think his family they they also took me for a ride, like really. And like I just took them like a normal family, but I don't think I think <laughs> they're working together. Would you ever him. date um, a man that is not from South Africa again? Whoo! <laughs> this time around, <laughs> no. This time around, I will have to like take a Sorry. pinch of salt. Are you serious? Um, Would you though? But be very careful. Oh, I, I, Would you, know, you date think... a Congolese man again? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> My mother will. <laughs> Who kill you? Like, what? <laughs> Again? <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I don't know. Hey, I don't know. I think that it 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 really does become. Maybe, yeah. Hey. And I think that is also the same thing. Like I was married to a Zulu. Mm. I don't see myself dating a Zulu. Like when a guy's like, oh, yeah. I'm Zulu. It's just like, ah, oh. exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> which is not fair. Which is not yeah. fair, obviously, so because they're not, the not all the same. Yeah. But it's just like because there will be certain traits that are the, are the same, and it's yeah. like. That's a red flag, but it's yeah. not really a red flag. So I think that, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Hey, ladies, um, be careful out there. Hey, I'm just looking scam. Hey, if it even linya looking scam, yeah, you know, you so guys. be careful, be careful, and take care of yourself. We're not saying don't be caring. We're not saying don't love, but just be careful. Mm. And gentlemen out there, please be honest with us, ladies. So that we get to know the real you. Don't come in, camouflage yourself and say, hey, I'm from Venda and uh, while you are from Zimbabwe. No, yeah. please don't come with he, stories. He, he, he's there, a guy that did that. He ran away. <laughs> you know him, Mr. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> <laughs> he so, said he was from Venda, but he was from Zimbabwe know. and his age was just not measuring. The hogs arrested him until he ran away. Um, and yeah, I think that another thing again, like if you meet a guy that's, and I think the COVID has also messed things ah, up for us COVID. because of everyone works from home now. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you meet a guy that's super successful, but he's forever at home and most chances is a scammer, but now it's like people are Everybody's really working home. from home. So, yeah. you know, it makes things a little bit more difficult. Yeah. And again, you know, I said this and I was also laughing, but it's not nothing to laugh about. Apparently they they start at levels others they want to dupe you 200 <laughs> no i i kid you not like it's just it's a mess guys these people are brutal 200, 200. and the one who really i'm dupe 1.2 and she's not even uh, un, uh, employed and she's a ninja and she's saying her friend got duped like 2000 or 2.5 and she's also not not working and it oh was a gosh. hassle to have to get that money to give because this one borrowed this this one borrowed that so i think that guys honestly let's take it all the way back then yeah. men used to provide for women yes. um a man would always make a plan for his family yeah, true. so don't try and you know make yourself a man yeah hey. stop providing for this man stop it yeah um yeah. then you know at least even if they ha break your heart, at least mm. they didn't break your bank. Yeah. You know? Even and any man that will leave you because of you didn't give him money was uh, never in love yeah. with you in the she first place. This, yeah, he's, it's good riddance. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's even worse, hey? Because even when you are a wife, you know they will trick you. They say, a wife needs to support. I know. You know? I know. Her husband. I know. So while they're in your marriage day, we know things happen. It's covid you know, people lose jobs. Men yeah. also have lost their jobs. Yeah. But you as a wife as well, you need to 
you know what hey Please. look after yourself look i'm after not saying yourself. don't support your husband uh-huh. but look after yourself make sure that you know you don't drown you know you yourself sure in debt yeah. for the next person yeah you it, need to, and to, it's so tricky because i used yeah. to think that at least if we're married i'm safe but clearly not and then he leaves you <laughs> with the debts you know because now you were trying to give him everything that you could but there were things that you couldn't cover in the house and now he just left you like that and now those things are stuck with you so yeah thanks thanks for the show hey <laughs> <laughs> thank we will you never i finish. feel like we'll talk yeah. until but yeah guys so basically ninjas um i know this was supposed to have come in the beginning um as i said this is my copy but this one was so nice that she's actually giving away this two copies so we're giving away these two copies she's giving you guys yes so guys please send me a whatsapp on 067-686-2280 I'll, and I'll uh, i will just send me like a motivation tell me why i should give you those two free copies and then you call you can also check me on my youtube let's say hot and um on what Insta- else? do you have instagram <sighs> Or my handle is facebook. somewhere on the book yeah <laughs> on the facebook yeah you can search me on facebook yeah and uh i will the, believe that y- the you'll details, send me the yeah. links yeah. i'll drop them in the description box so that you guys can f- can find them yeah. and yeah thank you so much You're the book welcome. is also on amazon so yeah. you can search it with the title i got scammed by my husband who married a pastor because definitely my husband was a scammer yeah he married a pastor <laughs> So yes. The Let's fact that there. this book actually has WhatsApp messages, guys. Them. That's Tell what. Them. <laughs> and pictures. And pictures of of people and things like <laughs> uh, you guys can't even. <laughs> that's like the that's thing. Me. You can't really see it, but you that's the, the part <laughs> that I'm just like, wow. You need to definitely buy the book. Yeah. And it's only two ninety, so including delivery. In- so you is it? To, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah so. You definitely have to yeah. get yourself a copy. Um, I'll also obviously tell you guys on Instagram. And then as I said, her, yeah. her link will be in the description box. This is not going to be the last time we actually have a definitely, video together. Yeah. We're going to have yeah. a video together and, and talk about other stuff. You know, yeah. it's not life only... Life after divorce. Yeah, life after single, divorce. Single, motherhood. Ooh. And oh, dating after divorce. It's not that if easy. I do. <laughs> no, it's not. I can't invite people now because I have to think of the little girl. Yeah. You know? It, 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 I feel like it's like they remove you from the race. Yeah. When you come back, the rules have changed ah. everything is upside down and can we also talk about the fact that when we were talking before we started filming yeah. you didn't know anything about Congo, um like men that scam no i didn't know. i also had no clue but yeah. there are people that are like oh i mean you should have known i'm like how how, how? <laughs> you know, we are not because raising. you are not even talking yeah. about it you know yeah. but raising that conversation you guys actually helps yeah. I feel like it's, it would be so useless you get duped your friend get duped this but one you don't duped. share you don't even what's share. the point yeah. what's the point so yeah. they keep on chowing money but hey 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 mr Kema, <laughs> we're coming for you yes <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna regret it yeah 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 so guys thank you so much for thanks being guys here. cheers bye ninjas <laughs> i love you guys love bye you.